Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Believe in Bingo podcast. Yours truly, Solomon Wilcox. Thanks for joining us. Look, we got a very special guest that's going to be joining us on today's show. But before we do that, let me tell you about Bet Online. It's the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything for online betting. Right now, you can receive 50% off and get free bets up to $250 on your first deposit to bet on anything from the Olympics to Major League Baseball, including Formula One racing. So head to the website today. Uh, go to Believe. Of course, uh, it's called using your promo code, I should say. You get 50% off a free bet, and you get the credit uh, for a free deposit of up to $250. Just go to betonline.com. Remember, bet online. The game starts here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Believe in Bingo podcast. Yours truly, Solomon Wilcott, and it is my pleasure and really uh, a great delight to have on one of my favorite teammates all time, and that is the great former Cincinnati Bengals nose tackle, Tim Crumright, joining us on the Believe in Bingo podcast. Timmy, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, Solomon. How are you today? Actually, I found the house okay. That's the key. It's still going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, first of all, you're looking good. You got your cowboy hat on. You got the cowboy boots ready to go. Uh, and so it's always good to have you. Always good to talk with you. I, I want to start first by talking with you because uh, we get to um, talk about the greatness that is Tim Crumron. Uh, you're going into the Bengals ring of honor uh, on the Monday night game week three at, at Paycor Stadium. Uh, tell me what it means to you to be going into the Bengals Ring of Honor. This means a this means a great deal because it's going to be a complete closure of my career. Yeah, as far as high school, college, and now pros. So it's going to mean a lot. The biggest thing is probably the most important thing is I have some teammates from Super Bowl Twenty Three, Boomer Esiason, Boomer Boomer Esiason, Anthony Munoz, yeah, and many more great ones. They're watching this also. That is so important because it's a special day. Hey, it is a very uh, special day. In fact, I think Mike Brown must have said, I want the baddest dude who's ever played on my defense. I want the baddest dude to ever play on my offense to go in together. You and Corey Dillon. <laughs> I think that's why I think this is a very special class. I thought Corey Dillon was a bad dude. Uh, and man, yeah. and Timmy, there was no one better than you, my friend, on defense. We got the same mindset. <laughs> no stop. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I can't say that word. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, had, I guess playing football with the uh, watching Corey play and watch me play, same yeah. mindset. Finish everything. Never stop. One more step. You know, a lot of times he'd come out of the hole. I watch him, and he's gone. That's right. And all of a sudden, here comes that 69 down the backside making a tackle. <laughs> Same ones, finish everything, run to the ball. And uh, the most important thing is practice, games. I had so much fun. I had a blast. Oh, Playing football man. Was so special to me. You know, to me, that's that's what rung out to me. My my favorite memory all time, and I look, I, I, I get to tell people this, and I tell people all the time. Um, when I, they ask me who was the best teammate you ever had, who was the best player that you ever play with, uh, it's not even a close second. It's Tim Crumry every every day. And here's why, Timmy. I, I tell people this. I'm a rookie in 1987. Uh, me and Eric Thomas, as you well know, we were kind of a pair. We hung out uh, in the secondary. But we're in a dark room watching a practice. You remember at Wilmington College in training camp and the defensive backs, we'd be in the back. And we're sitting there watching that day's practice. And I remember watching. And I leaned over to Eric and I said, who the hell is number 69? You know, I'm a rookie. I didn't, we didn't have names on the back of our practice jerseys. You know that. I said, who the hell, who is this guy? Because he was all over the place, making every single play in practice. You were tagging off on guys 20, 30 yards downfield as a nose tackle. And I told Eric, I said, we got to practice like that guy. I said, we got to practice like that. That's, that's how you play ball. And, uh, and so we always admired you and the way that you practice and the way that you played. Uh, I want to ask you that. How, how did you develop that mindset that you talked about you and Corey had where you brought it, man, every single day? Your games uh, was just like your practices. They were a mirror image of one another. Well, I was a true believer that uh, you, you practice what you play. 
Yeah. And uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to jump into this really quick. One of the reasons I had a great mindset is because of wrestling. Yeah. Wrestling is the reason I got down the field a lot. It's not like wrestling. You go on a mat, you and him. Yeah. Boom. And I turned the football game into that too. Also, I beat the yeah. center. I'm gone. I didn't yeah. get the pity, but I'm gone. So I mean, running down the field, that, that was fun. And that was one of the deals I had a, a lot of pride in because uh, uh, once the game is over, I always wanted the people to say, hey, this guy didn't stop no matter what. Yeah, man. Wrestling, for many of you linemen, whether you're on the offensive side or defensive side, it seems to be one of the key components that allows you to, to dominate the man in front of you. Um, I remember a game where we talked about this. You're going up against the, the great Hall of Famer, the center for the Miami Dolphins, Dwight Stevens. And, man, both you guys, I'm looking at, at them coming out of the huddle at us. I stood right across from you in the huddle. You, Your jersey's bloody. His jersey's bloody. And I remember thinking, what the hell are they doing to one another? What, what were you guys doing? It was like a, 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 a wrestling match between the both of you. <laughs> that was, those games are crazy now. It's, it's a lot of fun because it's. I love to play against the best people, and he's one of the best ones. We yeah. got it on. It wasn't no messing around. Every snap, you know, we would. We, it, was, it was very competitive, but uh, uh, he got some, and I got some. But the, the wrestling mentality was, I can always have leverage, and I always yeah. get my hands in the proper play, pace, play, yeah. place, and also get your opponent on the ground as fast as possible. Wow. So you were you were out there pinning dudes, man. And that, look, I look, I know young people uh, who play on the, either the offensive and defensive line can learn from what it is you have to teach. Uh, you went on to coach after your playing career for a very long time. Uh, you just have been so good and so accomplished. I went back and read um, you had you were the wrestling champion of the great state of Wisconsin back during a time where all divisions, right, um, all divisions. It was only one guy in your weight class that was going to finish in the entire state on top, and it was you. Uh, you played four years at Wisconsin. Uh, you led the team in tackles all four years. You go on to play 12 years in the NFL, over 1,000 tackles at the nose tackle position. Now, I know you take pride in that because you were a true zero technique. That meant you were over the center, and two guys were blocking you on every single play. Uh, so how did you get it done? And tell me why it was so important that you're one of the last great true nose tackles who played that zero technique. Well, that was a technique that was a very uh, back into the wrestling world. I'm going to give you a, a little funny story. Is that when I went to college, I was a linebacker and a fullback. Wow. Probably a week before um, the opening game, I think it was going to go play Purdue. I may have been Purdue. And I sent a uh, head coach, the coordinator called me and said, uh, Tim, yeah. would you ever play nose tackle? I said, I'm not going to make any tackle to play nose tackle. <laughs> just, try it. just try it. And I'll try it. Well, the first the game was like four or five days away. One practice, the starter dislocated his elbow. Guess who was starting? Me. You I did. I've wow. been nerving down the dirt in my life. Other than the fullback, had my hand down in high school. Well, the first play, these two guys double team me. I was on roller skates and gone. And was, <laughs> yeah, fly and you know what? <laughs> so I'm not say the word, but it was scary. I said, "All right, how am I going to get out of this? I'm going to wrestle that dude." Yeah. He hit at him, split the double, and the rest is history. Wow, that and quick, he, that quick, he, that, that quick. quick. I'm like, I'm, I got to survive somehow. I'm back yeah. to the wrestling mentality and said, "Hey, I'm going to split a uh, great little leverage here on this guy. Flip my hips like a takedown and split the double, and away we go." What really helps is a good linebacker, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Get, get the guy off. But uh, that's kind of how I did it. And uh, I take a lot of pride in all those tackles because uh, high school, probably it's in pros, I never missed a game. Dude, yeah. so you go from a great high school linebacker to the University of Wisconsin, and then your first game you're playing linebacker. Then they move you the very next week to nose tackle, and you've been in that position Every uh, ever since then, all throughout your college career and your pro career, yeah. That's so I never went back just because of wow. When I was in, when I was in college, I was, I was a second string linebacker, I was traveling, I was dying yeah. pumped for that, you know, that, that was excited, and uh, so I just uh, it's got it kind of fell into a little bit, but uh, after the first couple couple of plays and stuff, I got into the hang of it and how to play it and stuff, and 
use my leverage in the wrestling. And some of this stuff is uh, instinctively because uh, uh, farm mortality. You ever take a 150 pound bale of hay and throw it in a wagon? What yeah. do you use? Your Ooh, hips and arms. Hip. You got to use your hips. That's right. Um, so, anyway, that's I did it. Hips and arms, throw that bale of hay on the double team. So I ch- slammed them, flipped them, threw them. That was a double team. <laughs> and we should let everybody know that uh, you went on at the University of Wisconsin, uh, where you were the leading tackler every single year during your four-year career at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, I don't know that anyone has done better than that. Has anyone even broke your tackling records at at Wisconsin? I don't know. I just know I have them all. <laughs> you, start there. you still you still have those records. You do. <laughs> I just think that I just think that's amazing. And uh, the way you played and the your to me, I was inspired by the way that I watched you practice. I was inspired by the way that I watched you play. Um, there's another player from the University of Wisconsin. Uh, that I I remember asking him about that, and your your his play remind you remind me of yours, and that's JJ Watt. Because when I saw JJ, I said, "Dude, you look like you're just having the most fun out there of anybody." And Timmy, I'm telling you, that's the way you play. When I watched you play, I saw a guy that he if he could do it for free, he'd do it for free. You you enjoyed it, but you could see that every day in practice, and then it carried over to the game, what more can you add to that in terms of the enjoyment you got from that hand-to-hand physical combat? Well, you, 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 can't, you can't express the, the enjoyment I got unless you do it yeah. and stuff like that. But, you know, there's nothing more special. Coming out of Wilmington, yeah. you don't get to your full sweat now. You're full sweat. You know, yeah. it's just like, place I told the story the other day, I, I, another uh, interview, um, I put it in a farming mentality in two days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you do in the morning and get up for chores at five in the morning? Do yeah. chores. We do a night. Do chores. Wow. What's two days? Do the chores. Yep. And I had a, we had a blast. I mean, every, sure, it was it was hard and sweat, but I had so much fun. Dude, looking back at it, from training yep. camps, the best time of my life, and the games were the, the same thing. But if I can take the training camps and the practices and turn them over to be a productive football player on game day, that's the key in my heart. Um, I'm going to take you back. I don't know how many people ask you about this, Timmy. About Super Bowl 23. Um, and I know our hearts were broken when we saw you leave a game because we had never seen you leave a game. We'd never seen you not be able to finish a game. And that was one where that injury kind of told everybody that, no, no, this was going to be it. Uh, but you wouldn't leave the stadium that day. You stayed on the sideline the entire time that we continued to play in that game. Uh, but when people ask you about that game, what – what comes to mind most for you? Well, probably the coming out of the tunnel for the introduction. That, that was pretty important. But um, yeah. unfortunately, I got injured in, in, the, in the game, and that's part of football, too. Yeah. I tell everybody uh, uh, that game is so important to me. You can break my other leg, too, and I'll go back to Super Bowl and play. <laughs> I not lose that much. But uh, yeah. uh, staying in the locker room and stuff at halftime, you know, when we came in, everybody else said, what, what the heck are you doing? And I think I said, heck, what, what are you doing? Uh, the locker room says, "Give me a ring, give me a ring." Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I said, uh, "I want beer and a TV." I'm gonna say this guy <laughs> Jeff Rudy shows up with beer and TV. <laughs> Is that right? Is that <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll tell the same story. It's all good to say. <laughs> that's great. I think that's uh, great. Probably the craziest thing about it is there's just two phases of uh, uh, doing the injury. Is um, they were going to um, I had a TV now. They wouldn't let me have yeah. any beer. They said, Tim, uh, we're going to set the leg. We're going to give you some painkillers. Mm, I said, look, uh-huh. painkillers, but I remember the game. Nope. Set it. What did the Cowboys do? Give me a bullet. Talk wow. To the you don't give me a bullet. The police will not give me a bullet. Give me a towel. Bid on a towel. They said. Yeah. So anyway, they set the leg, and then um, the, the, the paramedics were fantastic. The ambulance driver, he says, well, mm-hmm. Timmy says, uh, we have to get you out of the stadium because of traffic for a third quarter. But there's a problem. So what's the problem? We got to go over speed bumps. So we hit the first speed bump. Not a problem. Hit the second speed bump. Speed bumps. Drug me. 
drugs <laughs> now. Second speed bump got you, huh? It got you. It's <laughs> like. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, look, you 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 came back from what? Hey, that injury was a significant injury. I mean, that would that injury for most people is going to change their careers. That injury for most people, um, given the fact that it was the very last game of the season or as late as it could ever be, playing in a Super Bowl, uh, that injury is not going to allow someone to come back and play at the start of the next season. But to a I mean, to your credit, to your toughness, and it was surprising for many of us who know how tough you are. We know you the baddest dude walking. But when you suited up and started the very first game of the next season, uh, I'd never seen anything like it before that. I'd never seen anything uh, like that since. So what allowed you to train that offseason to come back from a compound fracture of that devastating magnitude to come back and start the very next game uh, that we played at the start of the next season? Well, first of all, you have to understand an excellent doctor, Dr. Mike Welch. Yeah. I, I've seen him every once in a while. He's house up in Michigan, visit him and stuff like this. But uh, yeah. he did an excellent job. First of all, understanding what's wrong, how, what's yeah. the problem, how to fix it, what to do with it. And um, one of the craziest things is you say I'm mentally tough, yeah. but – through any injuries, your mind can heal a wonderful thing. Yeah. So yep. I went back to Wisconsin and I walked behind a snowblower as a walker. I walked on it so much, I bent, busted the screws off in my leg. <laughs> Did you really? And, <laughs> yes. Now, after hindsight, that was a good thing. You know why? Yeah. The bone was healing. Wow. I didn't know that until the doctor told me that the bone was healing. That's why they broke off. Yeah. Healed. Wow. Anyway, um, so that was that was one of the uh, craziest things. But there's a uh, uh, everybody don't know this, but uh, during a, we were up in Wilmington in training camp. Mm -hmm. That's where I trained. And you guys were sleeping with a flashlight on the field with the doctor. Wow. Yes. Jumping steps. Wow. And the funniest story was he said, I want to see you run. I said, I'm running. He goes, that's not a gate. I said, this is my gate. <laughs> he said, Run, show me your gate. That is my gate. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hey, 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 you weren't you weren't known for your speed. You were just known for you were just known for the guy who got it done, Timmy. That's it. It's plain and simple as that. Nobody asks how you got it done. Yeah, you just I'm got it slow. done. It's, I'm here at slow, but it's gonna be all day. That's right. You know, my, All first game, my first practice, my first uh, snap of the game is the same yep. as the end. That's right. Why I'm open. Yep. When same I intensity. Up, when same I intensity. Tired, yep. I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, but people should know that you came back. I think you made the Pro Bowl the very next year. No, after, I didn't. After I didn't, that I didn't injury. Make the Pro Bowl next year. No. Okay. Before that. That's right. Yeah, that's I'm right. You were on a system by tackling and stuff like that. So I made the yep. plays. But, uh, uh, when it all ended after 12 years, um, everybody said, why did yep. you retire? Well, Mike Brown said, you can be a backup. You can do this, this here. And I said, no, I'm going to retire. I lost yep. a step. I couldn't make the plays I wanted to make down the field. Yeah. So I said, yep. time, to, time to hang it up. Not a heck of a career. And uh, but I had to do it over. I, I had no regrets. And uh, Paul Brown says this too. He has no regrets on any of his job because he had yep. fun every day. Timmy, I'm going to tell you, man, uh, look, I played free safety uh, behind one of the greatest nose tackles this league has ever seen, and that's you. And I would make a tackle. It could be someone bust off tackle, and it might be a 15, 20-yard run, and I'm, I'm making the tackle down the field, the last line of defense. And I'm looking down, and there you are wrapped around the guy's ankles. And I'm like, how the hell the nose tackle get 20 yards downfield him? to help the safety make a tackle. But it was time and time again you did that. I mean, that's why you have over a 1,000 tackles in a 12-year career. And if I didn't see it with myself, I could tell you right now, I would think it was impossible. So how did you find yourself time after time? You ran downfield on every single play in practice. You ran down the field on every single play in the game. And I remember you making tackles 
15, 20 yards down the field as a nose tackle. I got to ask you, how did you get it done? Well, I wanted to have my mindset was um, I'm going to finish every play. Yeah. Look at where the ball is down the field. And I coached 15 years, too. You know, when I coached players, if you didn't show up on tape down the field, that's a minus because you got to be around the ball. How many times is you guys you, – your job is to turn them inside, inside out, right? And the outside yeah. in. Push them in. Push them in. That's where the fumbles come. That's when the backside plays come. You'd be surprised yeah. in the times you make down the field. Hey, I, I'm not a – Fast guy, I'm just fast all day. That's all, all day, <laughs> all day. <laughs> you, yeah, man, you played with an intensity that was second to none. Uh, I I remember you coaching. Let's talk. I want to ask you about this one player because this guy reminded me so much of you. And I was working in local television at Channel Five. You were the defensive line coach for the Bengals, and uh, and I knew they were going to try to take the defensive lineman. I I said, Crummy, you know, tell me what you got. Who are the guys you're looking at? And you talked about a defensive lineman from the University of Missouri. And I just remember you you would do this hand-fighting kind of combat thing to try to see what they were made of. And, and you said, he's the only guy I couldn't break him. And that guy was Justin Smith, who the Bengals took, I think, with the fourth overall pick that year. I begged Marvin Lewis to not let him go to San Francisco. I wanted to keep him here forever. But he was a player that you handpicked, and you thought that he was he was something special, and you turned out to be right. Kind of talk to me about that process of the hand fighting, maybe what you saw in Justin Smith that maybe a lot of people did it. Well, well, when, a lot of times uh, Justin Smith had a lot of production. First of all, I yes. don't care about forties. We watch my. I don't care about all the numbers. That's fine. Have great numbers. That's good. But can, how do you play in the football field? I played fast. Justin yeah. Smith played fast too. Now, when yeah. first, I first grabbed Justin and I pulled him, guess what he did? Sunk his hips and sat down. Ooh, I like Second, it. <laughs> automatically. So if yeah. you grab him and pull him, they stumble. Uh, their balance is messed up. They grab his arm, pull him. He throttles down, sinks his hips. Yeah. There's my guy right there. I can train the rest of the pieces. But that yeah. balance come in the hand stuff, it's nothing more than pummeling inside, outside. And then you yeah. grab a guy and you pull him like this. And you pull their arm, they should sit their sit their hips and pull back. Yeah. Not like that. Yeah. Pull back. Sit. That's sit first. Piece. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want to see mechanically, you know, from wrestling to a football player. And that's and I'd pick those guys in a second that would wrestle in a minute. Man, you are you are the greatest. Uh, we're running out of time. I wish I could talk to you all day. Uh, but we're so happy that you're gonna go into uh, the Bengals ring of honor week three at Paycor stadium. When the Cincinnati Bengals take on the Washington commanders, you and Corey Dillon are going to go in at the same time. And there's going to be many people uh, that are going to remember the joy that you gave the Cincinnati Bengals during your 12 year career. Uh, there's nobody who played with more heart. There's nobody who played with more determination and tenacity. I know Paul Brown loved it. I know the Brown family appreciate what you gave to the Bengals and the entire city of Cincinnati. Uh, I'm going to say it for them. Thank you. Um, and, man, we can't wait uh, to be there with you on that night. Thanks, Sally. I appreciate that. I, I just want to say one thing to Corey. Uh, he said something about going into an alley. Yeah. You remember that? He wanted to go in an alley and we all come out. Yeah. That's kind of what I was going to say about that. Well, Corey, <laughs> we just kind of slow him down a little bit and I'll finish him up. <laughs> hey, you, run down, you run him down now clean it up that's, that's right he, <laughs> he said it. he said we're it. coming out of the alley hot you two go down if you two guys go down the alley there ain't nobody <laughs> stopping you bro you coming out together there's no doubt about it we want to thank you for joining yeah. us we want to thank everyone for joining us for this wonderful very special edition of the believe in bingo podcast right here on valley sports ohio 